Hello everyone, it's Francesco here, and in today's video, I'm actually gonna be passing over to Will Nutt, who is a regular here on the channel, who dives today into the Notion API. Now, I've been pretty bad since the API has come out because I've only done a, a short explainer of what it's about, but in today's video, Will's actually gonna take us through how you can start connecting it to apps like Zapier, to Automate, and also Typeform, which is a great tutorial, and I just wanted to thank him for coming on. Now, Will has his own YouTube channel, he also has a great site called Notion VIP, which covers regular updates about Notion and also everything you'd expect from the Notion universe. He also has a great Bulletproof 2.0 template, which he offers a 50 bucks discount on, which will be included below. He's also working very hard in the background on a 3.0 edition, which takes full advantage of the API. So I'll include all of those links in the description. A huge thank you to Will for coming on, and hopefully he can guide you through around the API in a much more practical way than I could. <laughs> anyway, folks, thank you very much. Make sure to subscribe and I'll, I'll see you very soon. Cheerio. Thanks so much, Francesco. It's a pleasure to join Keep Productive once again, especially at such an exciting moment for Notion. Indeed, the API entered public beta, and that milestone is really worth the hype. It opens a whole new world of opportunity in Notion. So I'm going to offer a segment of my overview of the API that covers what it is and how to use it. And for the full overview, you can visit my YouTube channel and there's a text post on Notion VIP. And moving forward, I'll publish examples of more complex implementations of the Notion API. So be sure to subscribe to the Notion VIP newsletter. And maybe Francesco, I'll rejoin you here to share some of those implementations. And as always, Keep Productive fans can access my Bulletproof Notion workspace, for which I'm best known for $50 off using the code Keep Productive. And Francesco, I believe you'll include that among the resources in the video description. So the Notion API gives you two overarching capabilities. The first is that you can connect Notion with other apps to exchange information and make updates, where if you make an update in one app, the change is reflected in the other app. And that means you can sync your contacts, your calendar events, your expenses, and other information from a variety of sources. And then the API also gives you the ability to create automations within your workspace. So another widely requested feature among Notion users has been recurring tasks. And with the API, you can automatically recreate or reschedule a task when it's completed. So at the debut of the API, Notion offers three official integrations. One is Typeform, which is a tool used for creating online forms. And through the integration, you can send submissions from the form directly to a Notion database. And then the other two integrations are services that allow you to create custom integrations with apps that don't yet have official integrations. And one of those services is Zapier, and the other is called Automate.io. So let's look first at the Typeform integration. So here we have a type form that collects contact information and in Notion we have a people database that contains contact information for each person. And this database contains a property for each question of the type form. So once the form is published and the database is configured with a property that corresponds with each question of the type form, we can go into the connect area of Typeform and search for Notion. And we'll click Connect within Notion and then we'll authenticate the Typeform account and we'll authenticate the Notion account. And when you authenticate Notion, you're gonna choose the pages that you want the integration to be able to access. Now you can be selective about this, but I generally just choose the entire workspace because that's gonna allow the integration to access any database for future needs. So you click Allow Access, and then in this third step, we'll refresh. 
And that's going to allow us to choose the database for this particular use of the integration. In our case, it's the people database. And when you choose the database, you'll then have the option to map each question of the type form to its corresponding property. And I want to note that if you have a multiple choice question that maps to a select or multi-select property in Notion, you're going to want to make sure that those options are pre-configured within the Notion database. So with each type form question mapped to its corresponding property in the Notion database, we can click Save Mapping. And the integration is finalized, so when we make submissions using the form, they'll appear within that database. So as I mentioned, Zapier and Automate.io are services where you can create custom integrations with apps that don't yet offer official integrations. In Zapier, you create Zaps, and in Automate.io, you create Bots. So each zap and bot has a trigger followed by one or more actions. And basically, you're creating a formula that says, if trigger, do actions. So zaps and bots can be triggered by Notion, by other apps, or by these sorts of internal monitors you can configure in Zapier and Automate.io. And those triggers initialize one or more actions, which, like triggers, can occur within Notion, within other apps, or within internal functions of Zapier and Automate.io. And almost always, actions are going to reference information provided by the trigger, such as the ID of the page that was updated or a personal trait of a contact that was added. At launch of the API, Automate.io allows you to trigger bots from updated database items, whereas Zaps are only triggered from new database items. However, Zapier allows you to create these conditional paths for various outcomes of your filters, although you could technically create paths in Automate.io by chaining bots. Zapier also supports more apps, but overall you'll find it to be more expensive than Automate.io. So an admin will configure the Automate.io integration when creating a bot. When you want to use Notion for the first time in Automate.io, whether as the trigger app or the action app, you'll search for Notion, choose it under Add a New App, and then I typically leave the default name, just Notion, and click Authorize. And at this point, once again, you'll select the pages that you want to grant the integration access to. And I typically choose all pages of my workspace, but you can be more selective. And then you'll click Allow Access. And then Save. And that finalizes the integration. So you can now use Notion within bots as both the trigger apps and the action apps. And then the Zapier integration is a little bit more cumbersome to configure. So an admin will visit notion.so slash my dash integrations. And there the admin will create a new integration and I like the format service with an arrow and then the workspace that you integrate it with. So in this case it would be Zapier and an arrow and we're using the Nut Labs workspace. And then you can optionally upload a logo and then you'll want to make sure to indicate the workspace for this particular instance of the integration and then click Submit. And then you'll be given a secret which you can show and copy and you'll use that in Zapier. But before you use that in Zapier, you're going to want to go to the database where the integration will need access, at least for this first use of it. So what you'll do is you go to the Share menu and you'll click the Add People option and you'll see that new integration that you just created. So you'll choose that 
and then click invite and that gives the Zapier integration access to this particular database. Now you'll need to do that for each database that you want the integration to access or grant it high level access to sort of a parent page of multiple databases and therefore you won't have to do it on a database by database basis. So then in Zapier, when you're building your Zap, when you use Notion for the first time, you can search for it among the apps and you'll indicate your trigger event, which is going to be a new database item. And the initial configuration will ask you to sign in to Notion. And this is where you'll paste the secret that you copied. So you'll paste it and click continue. And that's going to allow you to proceed with the creation of your Zap. So those are the top lines from my overview of the Notion API. And for the full version, you can hop over to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more elaborate implementations of Notion integration, some of which I hope to demonstrate back here with Keep Productive.